only woman in the world who would put up with me. Uh, and then uh, we're getting a puppy. <laughs> well, every, everyone around us is starting to have kids because we hang out with older people. And I looked at her and I was like, no. Yeah. So we, we compromised and settled for a puppy. <laughs> And our due date is August 11th. <laughs> what a short term. <laughs> so, um, this morning, um, I have a couple songs picked oh. out that I, uh, that I just really, really enjoy playing and enjoy singing. But uh, this first one you guys know because it, it's an old, old timey, as I like to call them, old timey songs. Uh, it's Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And so you all know, y'all can sing along with it.
band that, that sings this, they're called the Rent Collective Experiment because they're not actually a band and they don't like being called a band because they like to have everyone have an equal part in their band. So they don't have lead singers, they just have like, do you want to sing this song? Oh, you want to sing? All right, come on, let's go sing the song. And um, they have, they play all these weird instruments, they play like washboards, they play um, this weird string banjo thing, I don't even know what it is. And uh, it, they have such a good time writing and praising God and, and writing music that just worships Him. And this song is, uh, it's called Build Your Kingdom Here, it says, um, Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hands, heal our streets and lands, let, set your church on fire, win this nation back, change this atmosphere, God, build your kingdom here. Isn't that an awesome prayer? Mm -hmm. That we want God to be here. He wants, to, he wants them to change everything, our atmosphere, the air we breathe, the people we run into. We want these streets to change. We want to be able to walk out our doors and leave them wide open and not worry about some crazy guy running into your house and stealing all your stuff. <laughs> but that's not to the kingdom. That, that's going to be awesome. Yep. No locks. <laughs>
what it's saying is you need to be able to lay down yourself and say, when Wilma says, Rusty, can you help me take these tables down? Yeah, Wilma. Being in subjection is just humbling yourself and being able to say, okay, I'll do that. <coughs> the Greek word also for subjection, which is also in this passage, is the same exact Greek word. So to be in subject to and to have subjection over, same word. To be in subjection, you need to be able to surrender yourself over to the wants and needs of the person that you're in subject to. So you need to be in subject to your parents when you're in their house. You need to be in subject, wives need to be in subject under their husbands. People in a church need to be in subject under their pastors. You see, you need to give up yourself to them so that you can do what they need to be done. <clears throat> it's kind of like this show I, I, I started watching or have been watching. Um, for a lot of you who know the author and Merlin story, um, Merlin is he's a wizard. He is a really, really, he's young at the time, he's really, really powerful, he doesn't, he's starting to come into himself. But then he has to hide it because as the story progresses, having magic is outlawed in the land. So if he was to be found out, he would have been killed. So he tries to keep this under wraps. Even though he is probably the most powerful person in this entire kingdom, he has to subject himself to be the servant of the king. Even though he is more powerful than the king himself, he needs to be under the king. He has humbled himself and put himself into subjection that even though he has these powers and he has the ability to do pretty much anything, he has to scrub shoes, he has to shine armor, he has to go like clean out the pig pens. He has to lower himself to a point of it's exactly what it is, servitude. But that's because he has to be in subjection to somebody, and that was King Paul. Subjection and sub being subject to is mentioned 12 times in the Bible. It's mentioned two times to husbands having your wives in subjection to you. It is mentioned two times for pastors to be in subject over you. And it is mentioned three times for us to be in subject to God. <clears throat> I go with the rule that if it says it once in the Bible, that's good enough for me. But if it says it 12 times, that means you really need to listen up. <laughs> and then all the other times, um, other than that, uh, it's talking about um, enemies being in subject to their conquerors and, and, and so on. <clears throat> now if you, uh, you don't have to flip here, it says, in James 4, 7 it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. To put this into perspective, you need two things. You need submission and humility. I'll get to humility in a second. But let's just get to the mind frame of whatever God says, you do. You have to get to the mindset when you're a child, whatever your parent says, you do. I had the fear of my father, like nobody's business. <laughs> he never beat me, he never hit me or anything, but I am telling you, if he told me to do something, I did it 12 times over, just to make sure that I wasn't going to inherit the wrath of my dad. <laughs> so we need to be in subjection to the will of God and into what the commandments of God are. <coughs> so let's get to that mind frame of whatever God says we do. So that's subject. That's what we want to humble yourself. In two verses in this passage, hum being humble is mentioned three times. <laughs> If it was mentioned once, God said, you need to humble yourself, that's important, like I said. But he mentions it three times in two verses. So, who he was talking to was really, really thick-headed. And they, 
when you think about it, he's talking to Peter. But no. This man is probably the thickest headed person in the entire Bible. And that's why that's why I love this passage, because he likes to repeat himself over and over and over, because Peter had to be repeated to very, very often. <laughs> That's why I like Peter, because he's like myself. I have to be told things multiple, multiple times. So when God says, clothe yourself in humility, humble yourselves, and humble again, it makes, it makes me really think, am I really a humble person? How do I become humble? How do I get this? And, and where are my shortcomings? For those of you who think you're a humble people, be prepared. <laughs> As I teach, I, I love to give you guys the definitions of the Greek because I think it gives you a better understanding of what the Bible is saying. And humble, the word is tapio, tapiino. I'm going to take a Greek class and figure out actually how to pronounce words. Essentially, it just means to humiliate, to be a base, or to bring low. It also means to having or to show modest or low esteem of your own importance. So you need to be able to take yourself, and even though you might be the best basketball player in the world, you may be Shaq. He's probably not a good example. You may be the best whatever in the entire world. But if you don't have humility and you can't bring yourself low, you have nothing. Because I, I like I like watching professional sports. But the people that bug me the most are the people who think they're the best in the world, and that they are so cocky that they just walk around with their head held high and like I am the best, even though my team is losing, I am the best. <laughs> I'm not gonna mention names, but I just can't stand those kinds. And I, I, I think God has given that inside of us, given us that ability to, to look at people like that and realize we do need to be humble. Right. We, we need to be that kind of person. We, or we do not need to be that kind of person. <clears throat> Being humble requires us to bring ourselves to the lowest point. If you think you're at the lowest point, try to think lower. Because that, that means to, the meaning of bringing to a base means that you are literally at the bottom. There is nothing beneath you, and if you think that there is someone beneath you, mm. you are not humble. <laughs> this hit me really hard when I was studying this, mm -hmm. and, and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm pretty humble. I'm a pretty humble guy. And, and then I realized, I'm, I'm not at the bottom. Mm. I, I still think there are people under me. I, I still think that I'm better than other people. I'm not humble. Like I told you guys before, the, the message preaches to the preacher before it preaches to the people. So, as I was reading this, it, it, it really hit me, and I've definitely begun to make some changes. <clears throat> and, and I hope and pray that it, it impacts you in a way that you can make some changes too. <clears throat> but being humble means you need to be at the base. You need to be at the very bottom. You can't think that there's anyone beneath you or you're not perfectly humble. Now let's look back up at verse 5, where it says to be clothed with humility. What exactly does being clothed in humility mean? Now let me just read you a passage here. It says, Second Chronicles, and it says in Second Chronicles 7. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lambs. Humility is the main part of that verse. We're wondering why our nation isn't turning back. We're wondering why that we're seeing our nation go the way it is. It's because we're praying, and I've seen it everywhere. We're praying for our country. Lord, please just bring our country back. Lord, turn, turn it around. But do you really see our country as a base? No. Do you see our country at the lowest 
and we need to be there to see our country come back around. So when you start praying for your country, how low are you getting? Not physically, because a lot of us can't get very low anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but how low can you get in your humility? <clears throat> to be clothed in the Bible is to be absolutely, 100% perfectly covered. For women, it was from your head to your toes. You were completely covered. There was nothing showing. For men, it was completely co covered from your neck down. Everything was completely covered. So, there cannot be a speck of your flesh peeking out anywhere, spiritually, for you to be humble. You can cover yourself in humility all the way up to your ankles, but if your feet are showing, you're not completely humble. Because it says to be clothed in humility. Um, that, that clothed is also used when we are to put on the righteousness of God. When it says we are clothed in the righteousness of God is the same word that is used there to be clothed in humility. So I put two and two together because I love the Bible because it just fits right, right in with each other. So to be completely humble and to be completely clothed in humility is to be clothed in the righteousness of God. And we get clothed in the righteousness of God when we accept Him as our Savior. So if you haven't accepted Him as your personal Savior, biblically speaking, I can't see how you can be perfectly humble. Right. It can't be done. <clears throat> Let's see what, what the Bible has to say about people being humble. In James 4, 6, it says... But he gives more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. In James 4.10 it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. 1 Peter 5.6 says, Humble yourselves therefore unto the mighty hand of God and he may exalt you in due time. Matthew 5.5 5 says, Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Do you see what is associated with being humble and meek? You get the mighty hand of God. He will exalt you in due time. There is nothing negative associated in the Bible with being humble. To being as low as you can possibly get, there is no negativity with that. I think that's amazing. Because, because in our, our fleshly minds, in our carnality, we can see ourselves as being prideful people. We want to be better than that person. We want to put on this and look better than these people. We want to be the best. We want to be better. We want our pride to be lifted up. I want to be the best at this. I want to do the best at that. But the Bible says the complete opposite. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being proud of accomplishments or being proud of your child coming home with an A on the report card. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a difference between being proud and being prideful. Right? I'll get to that in a second. <coughs> But there's nothing negative with being humble. That just blows my mind because, like I said, as our minds think that to be prestigious and, and to have everything in this world, we have to be, we have to be proud, we have to be prideful, we have to be lifted up. I just love how God's will and God's way is the complete opposite of our car. It's awesome. Now, like there's a lot to be said about being humble, there's also a lot to be said about pride and being proud, or prideful, being proud and prideful. <clears throat> um, 1 Timothy 6.4 says, He is proud, knowing nothing, but, uh, but doubting about questions and stripes of words, therefore comes envy, strife, railing, and evil sufferings. Um, 2 Timothy 3.2 says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Do we see that a lot today? Amen. <clears throat> um, James 4.6 says, But he gives more grace, wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. <clears throat> That's black and white. Mm -hmm. He resists the proud. He gives grace unto the humble. It, it's mind-blowing how God can take someone like me who thought that they were humble and then
then he just shows you flat out, just goes, there you got it. <laughs> he says, you need to reevaluate yourself. Right. You need to get to my standards. He said, You're, you were evaluating yourself at your own standards, or the world's standards of being humble. Right. He said, get on my level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a phrase that, that, uh, that we use when we play video games with each other. And when I'm playing with someone who's, who's not as good as I am, or I'm playing with someone who is better than I am, yeah. when you get beat and you get in that humble state, they go, get on my level. <laughs> you need to be on my level. And that's what God did to me. He beat me and said, get on my level. It's awesome. Awesome. Let's get back to being what proud is. It says 1 Peter 5 5. It says, Likewise, the younger submit yourselves, but God, let's skip down. God resists the proud again. It says it twice. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark 7 22 says, uh, Thieves, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. Do you see that pride is not associated with anything good? Right. Nothing. But what, where, where was humble? Where was humility? The grace of God, the mighty hand of God. You're, you get everything when you're humble. But what do you get when you're proud? Theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil lie, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. It's never associated with anything good. Nothing. But like I said, being proud of accomplishments is not wrong. The, the words that were used in the Bible were prideful and haughty. I thought haughty was a funny word. But prideful and haughty, do you, do you see the difference? That there has to be a distinction between you finding yourself above someone else is pride. Humble is having no one beneath you. The Bible says that Christ humbled himself and took on the cross. You know why? Because no one was beneath him. Everyone was on his shoulders. He humbled himself. Gives a new, every single message gives a new light yeah. on the crucifixion yes. of Christ. Right. Every message. <clears throat> yeah. Now let's, I, I have a little story here. Um, a little bit ago, there was a, a guy who was being really bad. I mean, um, he was pretty much beaten within an inch of his life, and they cast him on the side of the road and just let him there to die. Hundreds of people just walk past him, walk over him, or see him and walk on the other side of the street because they don't want to be bothered by that. There was this one man, he was kind of a prestigious guy. Uh, thought he was the who's who, the what's what, <laughs> the cat's meow. <laughs> he thought he had it all. And he saw this man within an inch of his life just laying there, uh, knowing that if he could not, if he would not help him, he would die. He crossed the street and walked on by. Now, was he humble? <laughs> was there anyone, or was there no one beneath him? Or was he prideful because of who he was? Right. Now, later on in the day, there was another man who came past him. And he was walking. And he saw this man. But this man was a really crooked man. And if he was seen helping this man, People would have started talking about him. People would have started murmuring and saying, Oh, did you see that? He's probably, you know, he's going to the other side. He's on the dark side now. <laughs> but did that stop that? No, he ran over to this man, picked him up, saw that he was in some serious, serious condition. Took him to this place, said, doctor him up. Make him 100% again. Make him the, the man he used to be. But you got to think, this man who picked this beaten up 
mess of a man. Could have lost his job, could have lost his home, his wife could have left him, um, he could have lost his position in the church, uh, he could have lost everything for helping this man just because of who this man was in the ditch. But he saw that he needed help. So he lowered himself so that there was no one beneath him. So even that man in the ditch, an inch away from his life, was still above him. So he picked him up, took him in, cared for him, and said, whatever he needs, however much it is, put it on my tab, I'll be back, and I'll pay Now, if you don't know, that was a biblical story, kind of in a modern tone. But I, I've literally seen videos on the news of people yes. being beaten and left on the street, and they yes. just walk yes. by. Mm -hmm. How do you, how? It, it blows my mind how people can be so prideful in themselves and just walk on by. Not my problem, I don't have to deal with that. I don't want to be bothered with that because I have places to go. I have I have a dinner date tonight. I have my, my boss needs to see me right now. <clears throat> Blows my mind. Blows my mind. And the last note, we need to trust in the almighty hand of God. Yes. <clears throat> so let's put two and two together. You need to submit yourself. You need to submit yourself, and you need to be humble. Submission is doing whatever the person above you is telling you to do. Humble is knowing that there is no one beneath you. And in the passage it says, you need to submit yourselves one to another. So what that does when you put two and two together, that puts you all on a level playing field. Because if you all are on the bottom, Amen. no one's above you. That's right. So... <clears throat> need to get on that level. Unfortunately, there is almost nobody on that level. But once you get there, the mighty hand of God will be at work with you. It's awesome to watch missionaries be have nothing, literally nothing when they go out to the field. They have what they have in their backpack, and they are just ready to go. I mean, you can see the fire of God. They're like, let's go to these little pygmy people out in Africa somewhere, and let's just hike with our backpacks, and we're just machete our way into the village, and we'll see what happens. We'll see God, the mighty hand of God at work. Yeah. Me, I don't, I, I don't think I could do that. You'd put me over there with a backpack and a machete, and I'd be like, take me with you. <laughs> I don't want to be here. I'm so scared. <laughs> but when you're on that level, the mighty hand of God is there. But you, it says to be under the mighty hand of God. This is awesome. I, I just love the Bible. Oh, it's so awesome. Let's go back to our verse here. <clears throat> I'll just read again. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he may, that he may exalt you in due time. Under. You need to be under the hand of God. You know why? Because the only person that should be over you is the hand of God. Oh God. The hierarchy goes something like this. You, your pastor, God. That's how it goes. That's it. That's the only hierarchy ever shown in the Bible. You, pastor, God. That's it. We need to be under the hand of God. That hand, I, I, I did a hand study a long time ago, but that hand is the one that made the world. That hand is the one that holds you that no one can pull you out of. That hand is the hand of God. And it's awesome to think all that he has done with just his word, but he also can use his hands. <clears throat> I 
essentially, how do we cast our cares now? You submit yourself, you humble yourself, and you put your trust in the mighty hand of God. And prayer is where you lay it all down. So just to, to, to reiterate, you need to be in submission to God. You need to humble yourself to God, and you need to trust in God. And like I said, if you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, and you have not turned from your sins in repentance, and accepted Him as your Savior, He's not going to take your cares. Because you can't pray to Him, because the Bible says if you're not saved, your prayers don't go higher than the ceiling. It's, it's mind-boggling how people think, and I've told so many of my friends that, Hey, can you can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? My dad's in the hospital. Or they said, Yeah, I'll pray for you. Yeah, I'll pray for you. But knowing that they're not saved, knowing that the prayer that they're praying for me mm -hmm. is going nowhere. Right. It's just sad. Yeah. But you need to put on Christ. Submit yourself to him. Humble yourself. And trust in him. <clears throat> Bible says in Psalms 141 2, it says, Let my prayers be set forth before thee as incense, and be lifted up my hands as the evening sacrifice. Our prayers are as incense to him during the sacrifice. And for those who have been here for, for Wilma's uh, tabernacle study, the incense just can go so deep. And that the, the incense that were burned go straight to the nostrils of God, and it's a sweet-smelling savor for Him. That's our prayers. Yes. Our prayers to Him are sweet. In Matthew 7, 7, He says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. The verse is so misquoted that no one actually knows what it means anymore. It's, it's those name and claimants have taken that verse and yes. said, whatever you ask of God, he'll give it to you. If you just seek with all your heart, he'll give it to you. No. That's after you submit yourself, you humble yourself, you trust in Christ, and then you ask. And that's where you t give your cares. You say, God, take these cares from me. God, I, I need you to take this anxiety from me. God, I need you to do this for me and do that for me. It's a step. It's a stepping stone. You need to submit, humble, and trust. The same way we lay our burdens down and cast our cares on Christ is the same process. This, again, I, this message completely blew my mind. Is the same process in which we receive Christ in our lives. To make it more clear, to accept Christ, you need to humble yourself to, to see yourself as a sinner. You need to submit yourself to God because He is an almighty God. He is righteous and He will have to send you to hell if you do not accept Him. And you need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see that? That is salvation. Because the thief on the cross, all he said was, Lord, remember me. That's it. Lord, remember me. There was no illustrious prayer. There was no Lord, Father God, our Lord Jesus in heaven, Father, please come down and... No. No. He saw his sin. He knew he was rightfully on the cross and he said, Lord, just remember me. And at that instant, he said, you'll be with me. You will be with me in paradise. <clears throat> so the same way that we cast our cares is the same way that we accepted Christ. Submit. Be humble. And to trust in Christ. It's cool how God can give us a, a set of things to do to come to Christ. But then it doesn't just go away. That, that, that set of things that we do, just that sequence of, of, of steps, doesn't just go away. It's like it was a one and done kind of thing. It was like, he takes that and you can apply it every day. Awesome, so awesome. I love God so much. And, and how he just reveals all of this 
through two verses. All of that in two verses. I don't even know how many verses are in the Bible, but that was only two of them. And I just talked to you guys for like 45 minutes. But if you take anything away from this message this morning, be in submission to God, whatever He asks of you to do. Humble yourselves. Make sure that there is no one underneath you. And trust in the almighty hand of God. Yes. I'll close with that. With every head bowed, every eye closed on you. An invitation. I don't like preaching without giving an invitation of coming to know Christ. Uh, I know mostly everyone in here. And I know almost all of your testimonies. But... If there is someone in here who just doesn't know Christ, who doesn't know Jesus, who doesn't have that appointed time in which they said, that is when I accepted Christ. That is when I said, Father, I am a sinner. Forgive me. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. I'll pray for you. I won't, I won't come after you at all. I just want to pray for a hand. If there's nobody here, I'll just close this morning. Father God, we just again thank you for this awesome opportunity uh, to come in this place and worship you, Father. I thank you for the revelation that you've given me through your word, that I can give what you've shown me to, to people and help them grow, God. Father, that you would take <clears throat> your word and, God, that you would multiply it in, in each and every one's life. Father, we just again lift you up this morning and that they would take this message and we would all take this message and apply it to our lives and in our hearts, God, and that we would not forget it. Again, I pray if there is someone in this room that just doesn't know what it means to be a child of God, to know what it means to be truly saved, they would just come see me or Wilma or pretty much anyone in here and just ask Lord, we again love you and we praise you, Jesus. In the name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.